Here's a mall that seems to get overlooked in most discussions. In the northeastern reaches of South Carolina stands the Magnolia Mall, a relatively plain and standard mall. Let's go take a look at this place and talk about its story. According to the Florence Morning News, Magnolia Mall would officially open in October 17, 1979, boasting a ribbon-cutting ceremony, prize drawings, special sales, and even free gifts for a four-day event. The mall would boast Sears as the only original anchor open with the mall, while Belk would open in 1980 as the second anchor. And at the time, two blank spots in the parking lot would suggest the opportunity for more anchors to come. Inside the mall, however, you had over 50 stores to pick from, as well as skylights and a fountain to admire. While it did take a while to get off the ground, the Magnolia Mall was sure to be a hit as business increased over the years, as well as its tenant roster. However, what you might not know is that the Magnolia Mall was a mall killer, as it competed directly with an outdoor mall named simply as the Florence Mall. Florence Mall had been around for 14 years before Magnolia Mall opened in 1979, siphoning away Belk, while J.C. Penney closed its doors for a few years, before eventually opening a new store at the Magnolia Mall in the mid-80s. Florence Mall just couldn't compete, and was eventually demauled in the very early 2000s, being turned inside out as a square strip mall. There is rumor, however, that the corridors still remain, if you know where to go. Don't, by the way, that is trespassing. In September 19th, 1985, it was announced that Roses would officially begin construction of a third anchor of the mall, located on the front side with groundbreaking ceremonies, as well as an I'm looking forward to Roses contest. They too would leave the Florence Mall behind. J.C. Penney was also reported to make an announcement of about opening a new anchor store at the Magnolia Mall, anticipated to open on the back end of the mall near the main fountain. It's also worth mentioning that a company known as Equity Properties owned the mall at the time, but the 1979 paper would name CBL & Associates as a developer. On March 5th, 1986, Roses would officially open as the third anchor of the Magnolia Mall, hosting a ribbon-cutting ceremony. Meanwhile, J.C. Penney would officially open on March 4th, 1987 as the mall's fourth anchor. And enter 1989, and as the mall approached its 10-year anniversary, many stores that were there day one were in the process of renewing their leases and renovating to update their image, and business was reportedly still going strong. Even Florence Mall was apparently still holding out, but that wouldn't last for much longer. In 1997, Pennsylvania Real Estate Investment Trust would acquire ownership of the Magnolia Mall, and they came in with a vision. They would also acquire the nearby Florence Commons Strip Mall to bring in a number of new stores, both in the mall and away at the Strip Mall. And in May 2002, Roses would be vacated and the space would be gutted to make way for Best Buy, as well as a new food court, which we just saw earlier. Additionally, Magnolia Mall would see a minor renovation, though this really just means clearing the floors of anything pleasant, cool, or even interesting for kiosks. But in the big picture, this was huge not just for the mall, 
but the surrounding area as it grew rapidly into a solid retail corridor for the area, as well as a rest stop for travelers coming off of Interstate 95 or reaching the east end of Interstate 20. Priot's last significant investment in the mall would happen around 2007 as they got approval to expand the mall, bringing in Dick's Sporting Goods as the fifth anchor to the mall, while Barnes & Noble would set up shop near Belk as a junior anchor. It seemed things were going quite well for the mall, but the 2010s would come in as the reality check for most malls, as Sears would close its doors in 2017. Priot did address this closure, however, and they would attract a Burlington Coat Factory to take its place. And as a side note, when I turned around away from that uh, Burlington earlier, there was a woman who stopped to ask me about it, confused as to why the shutter was still down. And two things came to mind. One, Burlington Coat Factory opens about an hour apart from the rest of the mall, and two, I don't think they open out into the mall at all, so you have to go outside in order to get in there. But getting back to the mall. However, in 2020, JCPenney would close its doors in October that year as part of the bankruptcy at the time. And while it would sit vacant for a year, 2021 would see Tilt Studio Arcade come in to take their place offering entertainment and recreation for the mall patrons locally and from on the road. At least all five anchor pads would remain occupied as of the making of this video. Today though, the mall is still hanging in there with a decent tenant roster. However, Priot has recently fallen into economic hardship and has filed for bankruptcy, which has put the futures of many malls into a haze which clickbait enthusiasts have exploited to no end. But that's a rant for another day. Now while Magnolia Mall has been surviving, I am starting to see a couple cracks show. We could very well be looking at a turning point for this mall going forward. And while these hallways are a little empty, I should point out the caveat that this was towards the tail end of the mall walkers hour, and we are coming in on opening hour. So keep that in mind. Now, while the mall is doing well, Florence itself, uh, not too much really. Area Vibes gives this place a rather poor score, and the crime rate on paper looks like it's insane, and amenities take a hit as well. Although, personally, if you ask me, I think Area Vibes is starting to judge places by amenities rather than anything else. Employment is a mixed bag, but it isn't terrible. Healthcare is good, though. And then there are the user reviews, which I only have two of. And regarding those reviews on the city of Florence, the worst of the two states that, simply, crime is bad, the roads suck, and there is very little to do in Florence. And basically they went on to say that once they had completed their education here, that they would be gone. The more positive review states that Florence is more laid back, a decent place to raise a family, and it has a fair amount of old history. Now, I only have a sample size of two user reviews, and I can only go so far judging by area vibes. I did only skim through this town for the mall, so... Tell me, people of Florence. How good or bad is Florence? Oh, I forgot to record the walkout. Ah well. Thanks for having me, Florence, South Carolina. And until next time, this is Doomy Grunt wishing you and the Magnolia Mall farewell and good luck.
Surely Florence can't be that bad, can it? I mean, you guys recently got a Bucky's. That's gotta count for something.